Hey guys, I'm Sun. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. One of the very first episodes of this series was how to self-host a hardened StrongSwan IKE v2 IPsec VPN server for iOS and macOS. And boy, did I blow my mind on this episode. It was a huge amount of work, but to this day, that is actually the setup that I'm using for my daily driver. Now, one thing that wasn't talked about in the context of that episode is how to configure Linux clients. Uh, so in today's episode, that's what we're going to be discussing. Now, uh, why would we want to connect Linux clients? Um, well, maybe you guys are using Linux as your daily driver, but another reason for wanting to use that is, say you have a Raspberry Pi, and that is the one that we just configured in last episode, and we want to have a way of making this kind of plug and play. We want to be able to take that Raspberry Pi, ship it to a friend's house and tell them plug an RG45 network cable into it and the power adapter and that's it. And then we can connect to it remotely in order to do this without having to set up port forwarding in the router or set up a DMZ zone. Well, we can use a strong swan client uh, to punch true NAT and therefore have this be super duper plug and play. And that's a setup that I really love. Uh, it's a setup that I've been using actually for about a year or two now. Uh, and yeah, I wanna share this setup with you guys today. So in order to pull that off, the other thing that we need is uh, we need the VPN server to statistic, statistically <laughs> to assign a static uh, IP to that VPN uh, client and uh, thankfully, StrongSwan has a feature for this, and that's actually one of the reasons why um, I use StrongSwan versus WireGuard, although maybe WireGuard has evolved since. Last time I checked, it was impossible to configure static uh, IPs for VPN clients. So uh, if you haven't watched this episode, I recommend following that episode for, uh, first. This episode is a prerequisite for today's episode. Uh, and by the way, this is a good time to mention that the reference material published on sunnutsen.com is pretty organic. It evolves over time. So I actually went through this whole uh, guide once more to update it to uh, latest standards and to make sure that is that it's as easy as possible for you guys to follow. So uh, yeah, I just did that. So I have a VPN connected. That's what I'm using right now on this demo computer. Uh, and yeah, so the other thing that I'm using on this demo computer is the self-hosted VPN kill switch using Packet Filter uh, on macOS. If you guys don't know about Packet Filter, that episode might be insightful. Macs ship with a low-level firewall called Packet Filter, and I actually leverage that firewall to make sure that when my computer boots, it can only connect to the VPN and therefore it makes sure that all the traffic is routed through the VPN. That helps mitigate uh, potential IPv6 leaks, among other things. So what I did here is I enabled trusted mode in order for my local network to be accessible because when it's in strict mode, computers on my local network cannot even discover my computer, which is pretty amazing from a security and a privacy perspective. So this is done here. Um, I'm also connected to this uh, and that's what we have here. So I'm connected as root to the Pi uh, over the local network, and I'm connected to the VPN server as root as well. So this here, uh, if we jump to today's uh, reference material, uh, you need to have a self-hosted hard and strong swan IKV2 blah, 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 VPN server. You need a Linux or Mac OS computer referred to as the certificate authority computer. Uh, this is my demo computer here, and we need a Debian-based Linux computer referred to as the client computer, and that's my Raspberry Pi in the context of today's episode. Okay, so let's jump in. Uh, when we left uh, that other episode, the one on how to configure the StrongSwan VPN, uh, we were left with a certificate authority uh, that lives within the uh, StrongSwan certs folder. So if I go into that folder here and I see what's in it, uh, we can see that I have the Alice set of certificate and keys. I also have one for Bob. That's where we're gonna, whoa, that's what we're gonna be creating today. Uh, I actually rehearsed for this episode. That's why they're there. Actually, as a matter of fact, maybe I'll keep, no, you know what? I'll override them. Okay. Uh, and we have the server certificates and the OpenSSL configuration. So what we wanna do here is we wanna run this command here 
in order to uh, say set an invariable and then Jesus an environment variable uh, called strong swan client name and we then want to override this little configuration file here uh, that is needed each time we configure a new client uh, and then we want to generate a set of keys I won't do this all over again because that's exactly what we have here Bob cert Bob CSR and Bob key so if you go about running those you'll end up with this uh, same setup now we want to connect to the client computer as I said I've already done this I'm connected as root and we want to have a look at the IP, IP table rules so if we look at IP table save um, this is a setup that's designed to be uh, pretty hardened uh, on the Raspberry Pi so uh, very few things are allowed except what's really essential but what we can see here is that the input established related and output established related as said here are already configured so the ones that we need to configure given that Raspberry Pi was configured uh, to be IPv4 only are those two rules here to allow uh, outbound connections to the StrongSwan server now once this is done we want to save those rules to the IPv4 rule uh, set and then we want to update the apt index um, this raspberry pi was uh, set up pretty recently so few or uh, there might be uh, no updates or very few updates available uh, so yeah everything's up to date and we now want to install strong swan and uh, lib karen extra plugins which is a set of plugins that we will be using uh, okay hopefully this will be fast okay good uh, so we can say okay for this and the next step here uh, while this progresses is uh, we want to set the strong swan client name and server IP environment variables uh, this is done according to the IP that you have for your strong swan server so this will likely well will certainly differ from mine uh, so okay it once we run this uh, now we're gonna configure the ipsec.conf uh, file and then we want to uh, configure the uh, ipsec.secrets file and now we want to disable a whole bunch of unused plugins to make things more secure and now we are going to transfer those certificates over from our certificate authority computer to uh, the client so switching back to the certificate authority computer which is my Mac I created a bunch of little helpers here using here docs so you can just run them and copy the output from them and then paste them here enter and we're gonna rinse and repeat a few times for the uh, different files that we need to move over so this one here okay and finally whoops finally this one here Oops. okay good now the last thing we want to do is we want to set that private folder to be only accessible by root and uh, now we want to restart strong swan so as I always say those demos are a little uh, nerve-wracking is that how we say this in English because sometimes things break and I don't want to have them broken in front of you guys but hopefully this will work okay yes marvelous established um, but you know I actually made a mistake but I'll I'll still explain okay as you can see here the IP that I got is 2.2 this was actually stati uh, stat statically is that a word assigned to the client um, I forgot to undo that on the server so this should have been uh, actually something random kind of like 171 but you know we'll kind of do the whole steps uh, anyways uh, now we want to make sure that uh, the VPN is now spoofing the IP so this here is the IP of the server so we're good that means that all the traffic is currently routed through the VPN uh, which is great so we now have actually a Raspberry Pi that when it when it's booted uh, it will automatically connect to the VPN and route traffic through it this is not as hardened a setup as what I have running on the Mac with the kill switch and stuff but it's more than enough for us to be able to punch through NAT. Uh, okay, next up we want to log into the server. As I said, I'm already logged in as root. And we want to have a look at... Uh, oh, actually, yeah. So this IP here is... 
<laughs> yeah, okay. So this IP here is not .171, it's actually .2. And if we run this, it will give us the virtual MAC address assigned to the VPN client. Uh, so, okay. And now we want to run this here. And uh, what we're doing with this line, and that's the line that I forgot to undo actually on the server. Uh, and that's why the client already had the IP address 2.2. But essentially it's telling DNS mask for the DHCP host with this MAC address, assign this IP address. So that is how IPs can be statistic, uh, statically Jesus, assigned to VPN clients. Okay, now we can restart uh, DNS mask. And on the client computer, we want to essentially restart uh, StrongSwan. And Ta-da, drum roll, uh, what we would have had here now and what we already had before because I forgot to undo it, damn it, is, uh, whoop. Did I break something? Jesus, maybe I broke something. Give me a second here. Did I forget something? Oh yeah, okay, so what happened here? That's interesting. I actually created duplicate entry within this file on the server. Okay, and now that's freaking it out. So I need to delete the duplicate entry here and restart DNS mask and things should work now. Okay, so uh, let's see if I go back on the client here and I restart, whoops, and I restart StrongSwan and I then look at my stuff here, we can see that it is established and it is established with this IP. Now, if I hadn't screwed up this demo, um, this would have been 171 and once assigned st statically, if that's a word, this would be 2.2. Uh, so yeah, that is pretty sweet here. So as we can see, we now have a static IP and that means that I can go about disconnecting this. Uh, actually, let's do it now. Uh, I can take this that way here and I can ship this Raspberry Pi anywhere in the world uh, and someone can just plug in an ethernet cable and power and this is now accessible, which means we can go about installing Borg on it and use that as our Borg backend for backups and that is pretty cool. So that's what we're gonna be doing in next episode. Take care guys, bye.